Welcome to Lord Lucan! It's time to buckle up your swash as we go headlong into another episode of Love During Lookup, where we find Mama Knob thinking Teddy's okay. I might like her. I might. Look out, ladies. New Blood Rick is here and he's a ladies' man. I've been accused of being a ladies' man and. It's Teddy's turn to direct the cameras. And we'll be doing some cooking with True. I just tried it in prison, you know what I mean? Up here, I thought it was chicken. Thank you so much for joining me, and big loves to those who've subscribed, you beautiful people, and a fresh set of Egyptian linens to the members of the Lucan Manor. And we're off to see the con from the Yukon. Well, actually, it says Mrs. from the Yukon, but I like the rhyming bit. Anyway, it's frostier than a warm welcome from Juju in the restaurant since Mama Nob decided to get all stroppy and unmanageable, and Vanilla Teddy was having none of it when she was compared to Nob's ex. Yeah, Dad, I'm drawing the line. Teeny! You're trying me! Teeny! No! Okay, can we talk? Oh, alright, so now we want to talk, I see, yeah. We was totally fine when she was sitting there taking all the shit that's been flung about the place. Oh no, maybe she's gone too far. I mean, oh my goodness, don't actually make her have feelings about it. That actually make her feel bad. So sit down and shut up, and take all the accusations without making it obvious that she's the bad guy. But Tanny's just getting warmed up. If we can leave out of this Okay, because there's a lot- Yeah, no, okay, there's more. You've gotta blow the bloody doors off now. Okay, because there's a lot I did for him that the bitch would have never thought of. And here's where Mama Nob realizes that she's been the r slash am I the a-hole here. Okay, well come on. Well tell me this. I need you to sit down and tell me this, and then I have a better understanding. And tries to backtrack, all in the name of understanding, of course. So tell me exactly how you feel and maybe I can switch the way I feel. Lots of talk of this understanding stuff suddenly, whether it's for the cameras or for the karma, or because she has actually looked at it objectively. Mama Nob opens her arms and her mind to Tenny's feelings. And with Mama Nob being a bit more mama and a bit less knob, Tenny feels like she can open up and share her pain. Yeah, whatever, no one really cares. It's all a bit, I thought this but didn't say, you thought that but didn't say. We've all got a bunch of feelings, and we feel entitled to have our basic emotional needs met, but are going about it all passively aggressively, so no one gets anywhere constructive. Then Mama Nob says, I was wrong for doing what I did, because I didn't know. Which could have been a bit better, you know, without those speechy fingers, but I think we've verged as close to an apology as we're gonna hear. But it's time to grab cover behind the nearest solid object, because Mama Nob says, I didn't want to shoot you. I don't want trying to shoot you. You were going to do what now? No one said anything about shooting anybody. Just slightly concerning you brought that up unprompted. But hey, that's where the conversation went and it's all fine now. I might like her. I might. Now let's go to Wilkes Barry Par. And it's Ayona and Michael's turn. So it's over to her mate Lexi for a quick recap. Visit with him and your court date on the same day. Mm-hmm. And then the very next day you're going to jail. Going to jail. Yes. Good job. But Lexi isn't just a set of nails and some slightly suspicious looking baby hairs, you know. I'm about to ask you some questions. She said to put Jamal through his paces with some real in-depth questioning. So you're not taking this real serious, huh? Okay, well, uh, if it didn't have a her at the end, it probably could have been even less of a question. But, uh, you know, still, you go girl and all that sort of stuff. But Slippery Jamal has had all the answers. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. We all went like that. Locked in. Well, you might be closer to the truth than you know, my little victorious bunch. But Lexi's kappa meter isn't giving him any respite. We'll see. And just when you may have been forgiven for thinking all is lost, Jamal pulls this out of his posterior. Get ready to be a Period. <laughs> That's right, Daddy. Oh my God, I love you. Ah, so that's how you do it, huh? Being put under scrutiny, just mention the word wedding and let the fantasy do the rest. Really? Is that all it took? I don't like you much when you're playing with my friend's heart, but jangle a wedding and the implication of all that attention, dresses, attention, shoes and booze? Well, these two are on board. That's oh, right, Daddy. Oh my God, I love you. No one cares about all that concern stuff when you get pissed up in something like her from Fashion Nova. And while Lexi checks in with Rachel Dolezal to compare notes on... <laughs> Ooh, that's a bit spicy for you, Duke. Anyway, we head over to greet the new face. Well, the face is sort of kind of new, but I think that haircut's been there since the early 80s. It's Rick. Uh, woohoo, I think. And Rick's doing some shopping. He's got a date. In like 1982. I mean, I mean, look at all this stuff. It's like someone vomited Las Vegas into polyester. I am shopping with my nieces. 
who should have totally been fired for their shopping advice. I don't know about that. So what's the story then, Ricky? We reconnected after 35 plus years. Okay, sounds pretty wholesome. She was chasing me in second grade. Connecting that way, it's pretty special, you know? Hang on a second. He's in second grade when you're like seven or eight or something. So his love is special like when you're seven. Okay, what does that mean? Love at seven is rubbish. It was mostly about finding someone to trade the latest stickers off. It wasn't about finding someone to charm the latest niggas off. I've been accused of being a ladies' man and... By who? Skippy the Virgin? But maybe I'm just missing the wow. I don't have children, so my nieces are kind of like kids to me. Yeah, he doesn't give the whole fatherly warmth thing, does he? He's all uncomfortable and awkward. Why did the casting even go for this guy? Have you been getting that mama's rotting corpse is still upstairs and looking out the window kind of vibe from him? Uh, it's just super concerning to me. Uh, creepy. But nice niece. I don't know what her name is. She looks like a bit of a Janice or a sort of Sally. So Janice is worried because Rick's love interest. It's safe for you to like get walked on or something, you know? Or tied up, or a little spanky spanky, you know, whatever your pleasure is. But her issue is with the old amber nectar, as the offence that took us to jail were drink related. And he... So my concern is... Party like me. She... Yeah, that's my concern. Party <laughs> like him, huh? Ah, oh, that must be an awesome night. Ooh. Hey, let's go. Things used to be fueled by alcohol and Norman's well. He was dependent on the booze and... I would drunk dial, drunk text. Tell me your name, I'll tell you mine. <laughs> I don't think so. And here's where he lets the nice nieces know he plans to get wedded. And they're thrilled about it. You're That's kidding. why I'm supporting her. You're gonna marry her. Yeah, it'll be fine. I've had enough of these two now. Let's go check out the boys in boys. Although apparently it's pronounced Boise, which is also one of these. <laughs> But Joe is boring and his conversations are so pedestrian. His tone of voice is so uninspiring and I just totally zone out with his bit. Man, I don't know, here's a highlight or something, I guess. We're a tight family. Yeah, mildly innuendo-ish. But aside from that, it's just blah, blah, no one cares about blah, blah, irritating, whiny tone of voice. But there is one saving grace in this whole section. And that comes courtesy of Michael and his acting skills. <coughs> Pepper spray, they made somebody here, hold on. Oh. No, oh no, pepper spray. It's pretty convenient that it happened right there in the middle of the world's least interesting conversation. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I hope everybody's okay, though. <laughs> this is gonna cut off, so call me. Okay, I'll call Yeah, good job the pepper spray is localized entirely next to him on the phone, because these guys over here totally aren't affected at all. Ooh, that's lucky. Or even the guy that walks right next to him. Bye. Bye. <laughs> he even did a little ooh, I'm ooh woozy at the end. Pfft, yeah, okay. I can't work on communication skills where he's at currently. You know, look what's going on behind him. Absolutely nothing by the looks of it, but hey, Joey bought the performance and has had a moan about inconvenient it is being in prison. Yeah, it does that. So the whole of that unnecessary long filler cup of bit was that Chris Hansen isn't getting in front of Roll Board for nine months. So presumably, something worth watching will happen between then and now, and uh, I don't know, we'll get back to them, and then they can show up to disappoint us in the next season of After Lockup. We should call it Britneying. Now let's go see what's happening in Pacific Mo, Guantana's little sister. It's Shanta and True. I know the ins and outs of running someone else's restaurant. <laughs> Did you see that? Those cars were zipping by. I know the ins and outs of running someone else's restaurant. I'll bet she's in the slow lane going like 15 miles an hour. And that's enough of her for now because we're going over to the La Luke kitchen as it's time for an episode of Cooking with True. And here we are in the kitchen. Lovely. So what are you cooking us up today, True? I'm finna cook a seafood omelet. Seafood. You're going to eat seafood from prison. Mmm, gastroenteritis. And who doesn't love to pair squid with cheese and egg? This here is called squid. I never even had squid. <laughs> Good job. Now how about a bit of relatable chat, just like they do on those proper deli programs? I just tried it in prison, you know what I mean? Up here, I thought it was chicken. <laughs> yeah, it's all those chickens with tentacles running around McDonald's farm, squirting ink about the place. That's why those sheep have those splodges, you know. All right, dump all my crab and my other little stuff in there. Yep, definitely lots of stuff in there. I'd say that's probably, I don't know, onion stuff with the crab stuff. Bit chunky for my taste, but if you like the sensation of eating a mouthful of onion, then you do you, chef. It's not actually that bad cooking at all, is it really? 
And then you can't go wrong with fried onions. Everybody loves the smell of those, surely. Plus a bit of squid stuff and crab stuff. Yeah, that's, that's not so bad. Touch of garlic, some butter. And throw some cheese, mozzarella cheese in it. Okay then, you've lost me. I can't even find a credible squid and cheese dish online. Well, except for this delight. Squid with cheese and egg. Mmm, <laughs> master recipes. Masterful. I'm guessing this thing that looks like it's been curled out from a big cheese rectum. Some sort of squirty cheese or something. And why not throw a few dozen spring onions on it? Why not? While you're there, you might as well set it on fire and try and administer it as a suppository. Alright, bingo. Ready for the cook-off. And there you go. You can wow your friends and family with that. So, what's Shobter up to? Well, today she's gonna have a look at some fannies. African and tropical cuisine. And Fanny has taken some time to open up for a shot and Drew. And give business advice. Drew shoots some questions. How long did it take to start seeing profit? Profit? From a startup restaurant business, which isn't selling things in an area that people like. On a balance of minus 100k on day one. Let's let Fanny give her thoughts on that one. Ooh, profit. Ah, <laughs> profit. Yeah, yeah, I remember the dream of making that when I started a business. Damn, that's long. I hope in our restaurant pop off in a few months. But Fanny's prefer to do it solo. Because having a business partner is all kinds of trouble. And she warns about flighty men. So while they do that, let's get back to a Yono and Jamal. And this isn't creepy at all. The young boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not, not, not creepy at all. <laughs> Okay, so... I like your haircut, son. Thank you. This <laughs> haircut. Yeah, that's a doozy, that one. Can I get my faded, Grandma? Nailed it. Back now to Tenny and Rob the Knob, and Tenny's not a happy bunny. No, no, no. Rob has totally failed the boyfriend test as he hasn't followed up with her the morning after the meeting. The one that he knew would be incendiary, because he was the cause. But he's not spoken to her, probably because I bet his mum's already on the phone with him, getting her side of things across before Tenny can give hers. So she's got to remind him who's got the pants on and isn't afraid to use them. I'm about to delete him off cameras. Which gets the desired effect and Tenny gets a call. Have you talked to your mom or do you even want to know how things went? There's a few right answers, but six million wrong answers to this question. Let's hazard a guess to see whether he's going to admit having dropped the ball and then he needs to pull his socks up before Tenny's going to give him a second down. Or will he opt for the total lack of awareness and empathy towards a difficult situation he caused? Was it not good? Top points for your correctitude. Mama Nob flinging up the axe has cut Tenny deep, so Rob enlightens us. We were still excessively communicating when me and Tenny came into the picture. Ah, I see. He was having a spot of bother with a girl he'd met online in jail, and that's where Tenny miraculously appears. But we were having our differences, and so, um... She feels the communication has been as wide open as Fanny. The food lady, who is clearly much more honest and open. <laughs> anyway, we're going to talk about everything when I get there. Just why not now? What's wrong with now? Well, if he tells you now, you'll get all annoyed and might not take your clothes off on the webcam anymore. So they tease this old line. I haven't been completely honest with my wife. Yeah, whatever. Rapidly losing interest in your secret. It better be good. I have a tattoo of portrait on my arm. Ah, yes, yeah, I see what you mean. It's not exactly a secret wife or something, but I can see that someone like Teddy wouldn't be pleased at all. That's all good. Just give her a couple of eyebrows and, hey, Frida Kahlo. Sorted. But there's more. He had a choice to make. Does he A, get out on time and be on parole with a few tests for a minute? Or B, not get out staling jail and not do the same parole requirements? So what does he choose? And, uh, get out later. Well, the answer was B, stay in jail for another two months. Is everything okay? And that's his empathy and awareness at work again. Last time now for Shanta and True. And Shanta is playing at detectives over some stolen money. I was gone one day, came back home, and it was $5,000 missing out of my safe. What? This guy who's done time for robbery and stuff? Who now walks around wearing some pretty slick stuff? Nah, no, I'm sure it's not him at all. That's fine. I didn't take anything from my sister, you know what I mean? Yep, well, I'm convinced. And that, my little flower, is it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Please do subscribe and ring the little belly thing. It supports my little channel a lot. If you like that, then why not try one of these offerings? And I look forward to seeing you again. Until next time, stay beautiful. Love to my three. You take care of yourself. Please subscribe now for our 
Nein. 